Agent. Okay, Agent. Be sure to type in your name or select it from the list. I really admire the Egyptians' irrigation systems. It's so cool how they manage to get water from the Nile to flow into the desert for farming. Well, the Nile is the longest river in the world. But even with all that water, Egypt still has to import two-thirds of its food supply. She sure didn't want to talk to us. I wonder what kind of funny business she was up to. I smell a rat. I think you smell the remains of that taco you stuffed in your pocket in Mexico. Chief, what do you think? About the food smell or the suspicious woman? I'll put out an alert on a suspected vile agent hanging out near the Sphinx. We'll see if we can track her. Meanwhile, check out the area. We've got to figure out what Carmen San Diego's plans are. Chief signing off. Nice jewelry, but it doesn't look like it was made around here. Let's use my trusty Watson clue analyzer. That should tell us where it came from. Hmm. If you insist. An Indian earring. And just what I thought, Carmen San Diego's fingerprints are all over it. It comes from around Agra, near the Taj Mahal. Well, 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 she's been back there again. Buenos Aires, huh? We should keep this card in that clue storage of yours. These symbols kind of look like they might mean something. I think you're right about that. We'll come back if we find any clues as to what they are. Fascinating, aren't they? Hieroglyphics are the ancient Egyptian form of picture writing. Not the easiest thing to translate, even for me. Sometimes they're meant to be read left to right, and other times right to left. Carmen had some degree or other in the study of hieroglyphics. The Nile River Valley is home to 99% of Egypt's people, and so important in Egyptian history. The Great Pyramid here at Giza was built to honor the Pharaoh Khufu. Then the Great Sphinx was built during his son's reign. Who was this Pharaoh Khufu that he raided all these big monuments? There's got to be some reason you carry that database around. Check it out. My brother was stationed in the military close to here. He explained to me that people in hot, dry climates wear robes and head coverings to keep the surrounding heat away from the body. Kind of the opposite of what you'd expect, huh? Cairo, the capital of Egypt, is the largest city in Africa. A very modern city in contrast to some of the oldest monuments in the world. India awaits, and I'm ready. I'll use every procedure in the book till I find Carmen San Diego. I know she's there. I've got a gut feeling. Well, I've got a gut feeling, too. But I think it's the airline food. When we've searched this area for signs of the Egyptian Senate table, I want to get back to New Delhi. Why? The capital of a country isn't the only cool place to hang. I'd rather visit Mumbai, which was called Bombay the last time I was here. You know, Bollywood. Bollywood? Yeah, they call it that because of all the movies made there. Oh my goodness, it's you two again. The secret spy agents, right? I've been keeping my eyes peeled since you left. For suspicious persons, you know. I have very helpful information for you. Really? Well, great. That tall lady in red you mentioned before. I have seen her yesterday. I was very sneaky. She dropped a piece of paper, and I got it right here. She did not suspect a thing. Thank you so much. 
I think you'll make a great secret agent someday. I do not have anything else for you, but I will be keeping my eyes peeled. But what is this thing? Some sort of instructions? The Taj Mahal is considered one of the wonders of the world. It was built to hold a tomb for the emperor's wife. That was in the 1600s. I guess they were more romantic back then. Such a diverse group of people here in India. It's great. The database indicates that most Indians are Hindu, but there are many other religions as well. Quick, Jules, what's the capital of Argentina? Buenos Aires. I thought you might know that. Then why'd you ask? We have to talk about something, don't we? Look, Pampas. Who are you calling Pampas? Oh, you mean P-A-M-P-A-S, Argentina's grasslands. Exactly. And cowboys down here are called gauchos. I knew that too, of course. Well, hey, gaucho. Any ideas where we can round up the stolen Egyptian Senate table? This place looks kind of deserted. Operation was successful. Vile security level Alpha 1. Monitor Acme 1 and 2 and report. Codename Hielo. Red Lady 1 out. I just love finding these things. Sounds like vile agents may be watching us, though. And what does that code name mean? Hielo. It's a Spanish word. It might be something to do with Spain or even Argentina, since they speak Spanish here, too. But it's the meaning of the word that's puzzling me. I need to make a note here in my journal. Why? What does it mean? Hielo means ice. We had pampas grass around the ranch where I grew up. It's popular as a decorative plant back home, but it grows naturally here. Argentinian cowboys, or gauchos, work the estancia, the ranch. Their work includes training new horses and tending the cattle. You know, it's not that much different than my folks' ranch back in the States. The Andes Mountains line the western edge of Argentina, all the way down to Patagonia. Ah, Patagonia. Not many people live around there, but the mountains are incredible. A real challenge to climbers. Beef is one of the most popular foods here. It's no surprise that it's one of Argentina's main exports. Other countries must like it, too. Sounds like you would get along great here. An old newspaper article. And did you read it? I've got to update my journal. So, someone besides us has been here recently. Let's call this number and see who we get. Yes, can I help you? Uh, yes. Hi. You don't know us, but we're detectives from Acme on official business. Any idea why a vile agent would have your business card? We found it in Egypt, of all places. Well, well, this is interesting. Carmen San Diego, she's the head of vile, right? She contacted me a few years ago about a base I helped build in Antarctica. Before I retired here, I was a contractor working on scientific installations. Oh, really? Even stranger. Last night someone stole the plans for the underground vaults near the base. Therefore the storage of dangerous chemicals and such. How would we find those vaults? They're quite a distance from the base. But there's a beacon at the base camp that turns on a signal at the vault. Here, write down the frequency you need to set it to. Eight, five, seven. Thank you. You've been really helpful. Sure thing. Anytime. Goodbye. Yes! We got some great info from him.
857, huh? Uh-huh, but this may sound strange. I had a bad feeling about him, Hawkins. He was almost too helpful. Nah, really? Well, we'll keep our eyes open. What do you think, Chief? I trust Jules' intuition. It's not often that she's wrong. Keep following Carmen San Diego's trail. I'll get another agent to look into your rancher friend. Chief, over and out. Curious. The Alhambra, eh? It's not in Argentina, that's for sure. Maybe the database could help. Good eyes, Hawkins. I'll note it in my journal. Check out that flag on the wall. That's definitely not Argentina's flag. How strange. I bet my database could help us figure out which country it's from. Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina. You been there, Jules? A long time ago. I remember driving on the Avenida Nueva de Julio, supposed to be the widest avenue in the world. Fewer people live in the northern part of Argentina. There's probably not a regular supply of water in the Gran Chaco, but it sure is beautiful. I was just reading how at one point, the UK, Norway, Chile, Argentina, Australia, New Zealand, and France all had overlapping claims to portions of Antarctica. Right. And then they all agreed not to press those claims and signed the Antarctic Treaty, stating that Antarctica can only be used for peaceful and scientific purposes. Maybe that trend will catch on with the rest of the world. Let's hope. I still can't get over this place. And I thought Quebec was cold. Ah, but there's more than just meets the eye. It's thought that large reserves of oil lie around the coast, and there's definitely coal underground in some places. Well, I tell you, they need all the fuel reserves they can get around here. Because it's cold. And where is everyone? This place does seem deserted. Strange. Hey! Check out the snowmobile! Let's go exploring! Hold on, Hawkins. In this weather, we'd get lost without a signal to follow. 98% of Antarctica is covered by ice, averaging a little more than a mile thick. I'd say that's safe enough to skate on. That anemometer measures wind speed, and it can have it tough here, because Antarctic blizzards can get up to 155 miles per hour. Looks like a key might have fallen out of the storage unit. But how on earth can we find it in all this snow and ice? More than 40 research stations can be found on the continent. Scientists can study global warming trends by monitoring the ice sheet. The climate is so harsh here that only a few insects, mosses, and lichens can survive. Some lichens may be up to 2,000 years old. They must be liking it here. Ha, ha, ha. More than 40 research stations can be found on the continent. Scientists can study global warming trends by monitoring the ice sheet. What a cool hunk of rock! It must be a meteorite. Here's a cool factoid. Since 1974, more than 14,000 meteorites have been found in the ice. Aw, oh, cool. You'll never guess what this is. No, let me guess. An Acme 5XQ3 Turbo Whatsit with an X-ray tweeter. Do I detect a note of sarcasm in your voice, Jules? Actually, it's an Acme MV24 molecular scanner. But what's it doing here, Chief? Very interesting, Hawkins. Security mentioned the theft of one of those from our operative in Buenos Aires. Hang on to it. It may prove useful. Hey, check out that cool transmitter over there by the window and... Look! Look! At the window! Who is that? What on earth? Quick! After them! Oh no! We're locked in! Don't worry about that. I'm prepared for any emergency. I... Well, I, I thought I had it. Now, where did I put my refluxing lock disengager? 
Where'd you get that? N424 Electrosonifier. Standard Acme issue. Now, where did they go? Looks like they hightailed it out of here. We need to figure out where they went. Maybe that transmitter inside can help. But how did they know we'd be here? Wait, that rancher from Argentina. I told you he was up to no good. Okay, let's see if we can input the correct frequency. That's it! We can home in on that signal. Hmm, this is quite a find. It seems to be part of a journal. Something tells me it may belong to someone we're quite familiar with already. Ms. You-Know-Who? Well, she's definitely been here then. We're still on the right track. This is a biography of James Cook. In the 1770s, he sailed below the Antarctic Circle, looking for a fabled southern continent. All he ever saw was lots of ice, but he knew there must be a continent there. Someone evidently likes penguins around here. Seven of the world's 18 species of penguin are found in Antarctica or nearby islands, so this is the place to see them. The seas around Antarctica are full of life. There are even six different species of seal that live here. Antarctica is a fragile and unspoiled continent. There are fears that development here will ruin all that. Looks like a key might have fallen out of the storage unit. We need to search around this area with the molecular scanner. Enough standing around. Found something. My super spy instincts tell me that this may be useful. My, what keen instincts you have. A useful key, huh? The key must fit the snowmobile. Climb on! Let's follow the signal and go find those vaults. As long as you know how to drive this thing. There's a first time for everything, Hawkins. Hang on! Wow, this looks like some kind of crazy lock scheme. Yeah, it's got Carmen Sandiego's name all over it. But I think we're missing some clues. We need to search around some more. We've got all we need from around here. Listen carefully, agents. Egyptian hieroglyphs. Get the picture? All this travel is kind of fun. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to catch Carmen. It would be nice to take a vacation, spend time gardening, and get to know my cat again. I'm ready when you are. Okay, let's find some clues. Fascinating, aren't they? 
Hieroglyphics are the ancient Egyptian form of picture writing. Not the easiest thing to translate, even for me. Sometimes they're meant to be read left to right, and other times right to left. Carmen had some degree or other in the study of hieroglyphics. These Egyptian hieroglyphs look like they form some kind of puzzle. You're right. Let's follow these instructions and see what happens. My hunch is that we'll need to find the exact matches for these symbols on the clue and in the right order. An electronic clue behind ancient hieroglyphs? Obviously, this was put here recently. And that design links it to Carmen San Diego. Yeehaw! You know, I had no idea that Antarctica was as large as it is. It's one tenth of the world's land. That's big. Really big. Really, really big. Wow, all this snow. If it weren't for chasing Carmen, I'd hit the slopes. I packed my board. You'd be snowboarding the Earth's largest desert. Yes, and snowfall on Antarctica's highest plateau is equal to the rainfall in Africa's Sahara Desert. Not a lot. Wow, this looks like some kind of crazy lock scheme. Yeah, it's got Carmen San Diego's name all over it. But I think we're missing some clues. We need to search around some more. Carmen San Diego spent a lot of time near the Alhambra. Check out the villa nearby and watch your step. No luck. Maybe we should check the spelling. Didn't I see that word written? Now, Madrid's the capital of Spain, and we're not even going there this time? Not this time. We're flying into Granada. Keep your eyes open for the Rock of Gibraltar. You'll be sorry if you miss it. What's so special about a big limestone rock? This is a huge limestone formation. It sits in the Strait of Gibraltar, the narrow entrance to the Mediterranean Sea which separates Europe from Africa. You can deduce that it's a fairly important chunk of real estate. Comprende, amigo? The chief said this villa had been rented by a bile agent recently. We need to keep our eyes open for a clue as to where that Senmut table might be stashed. Yeah, this is some fancy place. And isn't that big building over there, the Alhambra? Magnificent! Well, did you know this fact, Mr. Trivia? There's an unusual carving at the gate of the Alhambra of a hand and a key. According to Washington Irving's tale, the hand will one day reach down and grab the key. 
Then the earth will open and the hidden treasure will be found. Washington Irving, the legend of Sleepy Hollow author? That's right, Hawkins. Looks like we interrupted someone's game of chess. Check it out. Giant-sized. And look, there's that wheel design again. I'll take a photo of this. Whenever we see that design, Carmen Sandiego is definitely involved. Wait a minute. This isn't just the design. Take a closer look. Wow, I didn't notice. These look like drawings of the items Carmen's been stealing. At least five of them look familiar. Let's call the chief and see if she has any information on this villa. The villa? As a matter of fact, I've looked into it further. It once belonged to a reclusive Portuguese explorer. No one knows much about him, but there's a legend that he had a great treasure. That diary page we got in Thailand. Do you suppose it could be the same explorer? My intuition tells me that explorer, the wheel design, and a great treasure are all connected. Now, why would Carmen want the gems from these things? And are the other two items on her list? Well, I say you'd better note all that in your journal, regardless of what your intuition tells you. I love all the beautiful art and architecture in Spain. Many countries in the world reflect the Spanish influence from when Spain was a world power in the 16th and 17th centuries. Spanish oranges are famous, of course, but you'll also find other citrus fruits, not to mention grapes and olives growing around here. The Moors built the Alhambra in the 14th century. The fortress, or Alcazar, the gardens, and the royal palace reflect the Muslim African style that so influenced Spain. No luck. Maybe we should check the spelling. Didn't I see that word written down somewhere? Hot tip. Visit the store near Sydney Harbor. You never know what someone may leave lying around. No luck. Maybe we should check the spelling. Didn't I see that word written down somewhere? No luck. Maybe we should check the spelling. Didn't I see that word written down somewhere? It always blows my mind to think that, back in the days of colonialism, like, what, 1770? Someone like Captain James Cook could just sail to Australia and claim the whole East Coast for Britain. I know. Australia only won independence in 1901. Apparently, the government is finally now working to help the native Aboriginal peoples regain title to some of their lands. Hey, all right. This part of Australia is a happening kind of place. Sailing, soccer, restaurants, you name it. A lot of Australians must agree with you, because more than 80% of them live here on the southeast coast, in cities like Sydney or Canberra, the capital. Most of the rest of Australia is desert. Well, I want to take a look around this souvenir shop a bit. Maybe I can find a memento to take back to the States. Who knows? We may even pick up a clue or two. Someone's been doodling here, and look what was on that person's mind. All solved except for that one word. Hmm. From the looks of this clue, I'll bet we can find the answer somewhere around here. Let's hang on to it. Cool. Rocks. One of the reasons Australia is prosperous is its large deposits of coal, iron ore, gold, and other minerals. Do you think I should get some for the folks back home? Uh, 
Why don't you shop around some more? Everyone thinks koalas are so cute, but they're not as friendly as they look. You're right on that one, Hawkins. A didgeridoo. A didgeridoo what? Didgeridoo. It's an aboriginal musical instrument. Australia is called the land down under because it's below the equator. It's the only country in the world to occupy an entire continent. Pretty cool, huh, Jules? Hey, I know what that is. Boomerangs are used by some aborigines for hunting. The famous Sydney Opera House was designed to resemble the sails of a ship. Carmen and I saw a performance there once. Unforgettable. Cool. Rocks. One of the reasons Australia is prosperous is its large deposits of coal, iron ore, gold, and other minerals. Do you think I should get some for the folks back home? Uh, why don't you shop around some more? You need the solution to that crossword. Look around the store near Sydney Harbor, but keep an eye open for Carmen San Diego or one of her gang. Kangaroos, like wallabies, koalas, and wombats, are marsupials, carrying their young in a pouch. See? See? I'm not the only one who carries things in my pockets. The Australian platypus is certainly unique for a mammal. Not only does it have a beak and webbed feet, it lays eggs. Oh, and I just remembered. The male has poisonous spurs behind each ankle. That's it. Mr. Trivia does it again. The solution to the missing word in the crossword puzzle. I'll jot down that word. Jump on that snowmobile in Antarctica. When you get to the entrance to the vaults, plot the location of the chess pieces on the grid. Use the letter portion of each grid coordinate to find the row on the lock. Use the number portion to set its height. Good luck. Can't wait to land. I hope heading to the city will help us catch Carmen. Let's not stand around. We've got a mystery to solve. Wow. This looks like some kind of crazy lock scheme. Yeah, it's got Carmen San Diego's name all over it. Well, let's see if we can figure it out. It looks like we've got all the pieces we need. Yeah, to set the number on the lock for the letter P in platypus, it looks like we need to find the letter P at the bottom of the chessboard, and then look at which row the chess piece is in. This is quite a place. It's actually a bit warmer down here than on the surface. Shh. Let's keep our eyes peeled and our ears open. Carmen could be down here too. This could get to be quite a maze. We're not lost yet. That stolen item's got to be around here somewhere. You're sure we're not lost? Trust me. 
It's here! But where's Carmen San Diego? I thought we'd find her for sure. But we found the Senate table, and that's quite a catch. And we know that it's part of a greater treasure. And just as we expected, there's the wheel design. Look, no gem. Good. You're really working together on this. I think you're on to something with that explorer. Carmen San Diego's after a bigger treasure for sure. I've had another call, and... And don't tell me. Carmen's stolen something round and valuable. I remember the image from the villa near Alhambra. You're right, Jules. You always did have a good sense about these things. It's an Aztec calendar. Circular, like you described, with a series of beautifully decorated rings and... And I hate to break up this little party, but I just couldn't resist. So you managed to escape my little trap at the base camp. I'm impressed, Jules. You and Mr. Hawkins are working together better than I thought you would. And you learned a little something at the villa, didn't you? But don't get cocky. There's so much more you don't know. See you around. Ciao. She did it again! You've got to stop her. Perhaps the best way to spoil her fun is to find that Aztec calendar. A vile airplane was tracked flying over the Congo and then disappeared from radar. We lost the signal over the Ituri rainforest. I want you two to get over there pronto. Over and out. Good. Somewhere tropical. I'm freezing. Let's go. I hate to admit it, but I get nervous flying over all this rainforest. How long before we reach the capital at Kinshasa? Well, even though we can see the Congo River out the window already, it could still be quite a ways. It's the second longest river in Africa, running right through the Democratic Republic of Congo. Whoa! Looks like our vile friend had a little accident. Not my idea of fun, crashing into one of the world's thickest rainforests. But no one's here now, as far as I can see. You're right. But that campfire can't have been out for very long. We better watch our step. If we're right, finding that Aztec calendar is crucial to putting a wrench in Carmen's plans. <laughs>